the hormones and the pharmaceuticals and all the other things aren't listed as problems. So there really isn't a strategy to clean those things with the EPA. We don't have enough people drinking it in one place at one time, getting cancer or having other problems related, that we can actually say, this is it, let's stop. It really required a rethinking of how we look at toxins. In the past, we looked at things like mortality. We don't see mortality with endocrine disruptors. They're really in what often is referred to as trace amounts. They're very, very small, minute quantities. We try to find links to certain diseases in, in, in humans that are long-term, um, multiple sclerosis, things like this. We also think may have a chemical background to them. We think we're talking about autism now and the possibility that there's some chemical link to that. So we begin to look more broadly at this question, and I think in the future you may find that they will look at things in a different way than just the mortality levels. The EPA tends not to be proactive. If you look at atrazine or, or chemical regulation, um, it's mostly the pharmaceutical companies that do their own regulating. The pharmaceutical companies that have the same people who work for the EPA, um, after they work for the pharmaceutical companies, it's kind of rotating doors. Certainly in this country there's massive lobbying on the part of the chemical manufacturers pesticide manufacturers not to take action, quote, because we haven't proven it. Um, if you'll allow me to be facetious for a minute, that's been the war cry against global warming, too. The uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency took a very uh, close look at these issues about 10 years ago and published a report that outlined the research direction. This is, was a completely new field of study. But so far it hasn't resulted in anything concrete, uh, either in the results of the research or in control. But they are aware of it. They're certainly aware of it. But I think getting more folks to know what's going on and put pressure on the EPA or understand it and, and make changes in their own lifestyles, that's all really helpful. Hopefully, you know, this is a problem that could be addressed in the future by the government agencies and the municipalities within each city and town and state within the United States to kind of further deal with these issues because obviously in this era of pollution, the clean aspect of our water supply is dwindling. All of the federal agencies, one way or another, probably touch on this question to some extent. But certainly Food and Drug, Department of Agriculture, EPA, um, they're the, the players in this, and they're the ones with the rules.